I've done a number of jobs that I didn't love as much as calligraphy. Fun fact, from Earl Lupfer. I noticed I had on my bookshelf, right now we have 1,700 members, the most we've ever had. I'm Jody Mees, I live in San Francisco. And as a kid, used to copy italics out of printed magazines with a pencil or a ballpoint pen. I had no idea that you needed a broad nib for that. And it was something that I kept putting off. And then I started receiving Christmas cards in italic from a friend from third grade. And every year I'd say, oh, right, I want to do that. That's what I want to do. But I didn't have time with young children and my job and all of that. And then finally, I came upon the time I got started as soon as they were old enough and I went full speed ahead with every class I could take and every conference I could go to and the Spencerian saga and all of that. Um, in the meantime, that old friend had to give up calligraphy because of her circumstances and lo and behold, she's here at the conference now. She lives in Atlanta. and. Uh, so we're both on the same path now. I also have a background in music. I was a professional flutist for about 30 years. And uh, things all overlapped along the way and I moved from one to the next. But um, I find them to be related, very much so. The rhythm of music and just the shape of music for me really relates to calligraphy in a beautiful way. So I was a musician and then started to get more and more busy with the school, and so I had to choose, and I went with the school because it was a career that worked with my life. <laughs> um, and then when I took up calligraphy and started working professionally, I had to choose between those two things, and I loved calligraphy so much more, there was no question about it. Once I was able to do it, I left the school and went full speed ahead on that. <laughs> I was asked a number of times to be on the board and I was just too busy with the school and family things and I said once I leave my job at the school then we can consider. Well, my last day on the job I put a photo of my empty office saying the last day, I'm gone, it's the end of an era. I put that on Facebook and in about 15 minutes I got a call <laughs> saying would you please be on the campus board. So that's the story. I was a member at large for a couple of years and then stepped into second vice president, which as you know is in the queue, to become then first vice president and eventually president. I did that and was prepared to do a conference in 2020, uh, which was then canceled. We were able to rebook the conference for 2022, where we are now, and uh, they said, great, the board said, great, we'll do that if you'll circle back and be president. And it actually, I'm delighted to do it because I've seen it through to the end, to the fun part. It's a lot, a lot, a lot of work, but after Monday night, I called my husband and said, it was really worth it all. <laughs> it's really, people are so happy to be here and enjoying themselves and learning and meeting each other, networking and socializing, and it really becomes more and more of a family the longer you come here. And especially since we've all seen each other so much in little boxes online, yeah. to actually meet those people is just wonderful. Or reconnect with them if you haven't seen for a while. That's been very special. Yeah. The International Association of Master Penmen and Grocers, not grocers, but engrossers, and teachers of handwriting. Um, Interestingly, it used to be, it used to have, um, not have engrossers in it, it just, I am about the E, and uh, that came added along the way, and it is an organization dedicated to the art of penmanship, to the teaching of handwriting, to the 
furthering of this beautiful art form. Right now we have 1,700 members, the most we've ever had. All over the world, I think three or 400 of them are international. Um, we're based in the U.S. Um, the organization started with um, mostly Americans and some Canadians. So they would sometimes meet in Canada and sometimes in the United States, more often here. And it's just become difficult to take it across the borders when the majority of people are here. So I'm thrilled to see more international participation. And it's been really my, um, my mission to try to find more ways to involve our members who maybe don't come to conference. There are 300 of us at the conference and out of 1,700 members, that's not that many. So we've tried to think of things like I am virtual, a logo contest, um, we, I have a scrapbook that happens in the study room, uh, envelope exchange, anyone from anywhere can take, take part in those and then of course they receive the journal. And we're cooking up some more plans for that that I can't really talk about yet, but um, we will be continuing the book. The board just voted to continue the IAMPA virtual program, so we'll be doing another mini conference and four more virtual study rooms, which are very interesting. I found myself in a breakout room at the virtual study room with someone from Abu Dhabi and Pakistan, and another one I was with someone from Iceland. It's so exciting that people are taking advantage of that. Yeah, the time change is always a little bit of an issue, but we get around it somehow. IAMPTH Virtual is a mini conference. Um, we have it set up so that we have three blocks, I'm sorry, four blocks of three hour long demos. And what we have done for this first one last November for the first time is to invite teachers to make a 45 minute video. So they're all pre recorded, but then the teacher is online with us live while the recording is being played, available in the chat and then for questions and answers at the end. And we deliberately chose teachers, I think we had teachers from five continents this last time, teachers that probably would never make the trip to teach at our annual conference in person. So it was wonderful to hear of those teachers and especially now that there are so many virtual opportunities, if you see it, you take an hour long or see an hour long demo with the teacher, then you can seek out that teacher's class if you're more interested. And I think we drew 400 um, participants. They weren't all online live, but it was available for three weeks or so afterwards to watch. And the participants were from, I think, 30 countries. So that was really exciting. Yes, it yeah, is. Really exciting. And then um, we followed that up with a virtual study room. And that's just an hour and a half actually we expanded it to two hours, very informal, we have a couple of demos, and then as I mentioned, the breakout rooms, um, where you'll get a prompt, a question to discuss, and there's conversation, and there's maybe just six people or so in the room, so it's really fun to have that chance to interact with people from all over the world. I believe, other than the local scholarship, one must have been a member for a year, and we have a local scholarship, and a general scholarship, and an international scholarship every year. We have a couple of grants that we give away, actually, I believe three grants that we give away. And the most important thing I can tell you is that we don't get many applicants. It's very surprising, and we're discussing ways now on the board to get the word out more because it's such a great opportunity and some of the grants you can buy supplies online with them you know uh, other grants help you come to the, actually come to the conference um, but there's a chairman of the scholarship committee and then the judges everything's judge blind so we don't discuss who the judges are for this just the chairperson supervises all we need to make that clear that it's not a lot. It's um, actually answering a few questions and submitting a piece of work. You don't have to submit the original. And it's about where, what the person's 
relationship is with to penmanship, where they think they might be going with it. Not really about a level of skill, other than for one of the grants. Um, it's really uh, engaging interest, because that's what we're all here for, is to, to grow and improve, and we're at many different levels here. Um, we, people are here who have never picked up a pen before, up to Master Penman. <laughs> so, and, and they all interact here in such a beautiful way. Enjoy that. That's a very different thing. We judge original pieces. Um, again, the judges are not revealed just to keep things, to keep the judging blind. Um, they don't know whose piece they're looking at, and, and the applicants don't know who's looking at the piece. Um, and there is some there are comments offered um, on, the, on the submitted pieces. And as you see, it's quite a selective program. And it is leading on eventually to a revised master penman program. We keep building it one step at a time. We've added, you know, we started with Spencerian and a grosser script, and then I believe we added foundational and Old English, and then I believe borders are in place, and all of those things add up to the final step of going for Master Penman, and that's still being worked out right now, what that will look like, but I think it's a much improved program. Um, it's clearer, the guidelines are clearer, it's available to more people, and we just keep figuring it out as we go along. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a process. Take every class you can, explore. Iampic is perfect for that because I call it a tasting menu. There's just a different class every day for five days. Some conferences you go to and you're with the same teacher for five days, it's very intense. But this one, you have five different teachers plus the evening activities and all. And I found I took, I used to take everything and then I started narrowing it down to what really interested me. And that would be, it worked for me. So that's what that would be my advice. Yeah. Um, my website is jodymeese.com, J-O-D-Y-M-E-E-S-E.com. And that's my portfolio and a little about me. Um, fun fact, Earl Lupfer. Oh is a well-known pen, and I believe he's the last president of the Zanarian College. And I noticed I had on my bookshelf a family history of the Lupfer and related families that was part of my family. And I have some great grandparents with that name. So I, it took me a long time to find it, but I turned out it's a pretty thin association, but Earl Lupfer is a fourth cousin, one twice removed. <laughs> He's my fourth cousin, twice removed. Oh my! I don't think I got a whole lot of calligraphy ability from that, but I like to laugh about that. And my business is called Neo Plumas, which means a thousand pens or a thousand feathers. And my grandmother, the one who's in that loop for mine, was named Mildred Pluma. It was her first and middle name. And so Neo Plumas is kind of a play on that, as well as the meaning of Pens. I love that. I'm a big fan of black letter and have taken a lot of that um, in classes in San Francisco. Mm -hmm. And there's a little bit of a divide between the black letter and the pointed pen community. And my teacher there, finally, I sent him a card that had both on it being a little sheepish about it, and he said, be the one to combine the two with pizzazz. So that's what I tried to do.